Temperance Sunday this year happens to have the gospel which says uh, the person who listens to the word of God and acts on it builds their house on a rock. And the person who listens to the word of God and doesn't act on it uh, builds their house on sand. And temperance really is taking cognizance of the fact that we are the stewards of creation and it's up to every one of us to make good use and the best use of the world's resources. And the second gift that we have is the gift of our own life and that that's a gift that we don't want to damage or abuse and so Temperance Sunday is the day when we say life is for living, the resources of the world are not for one generation alone, they're for every generation. So moderation, the golden mean, uh, just uh, use everything sensibly and that's really what temperance is. Now Temperance Sunday is applied to, particularly to alcohol because uh, we have, as Irish people, a love-hate relationship with it. And we know now from the statistics that anyone will find in the Alcohol Action Ireland website is that um, four out of ten women have a problem with alcohol and seven out of ten men. And that we spend over 3.7 billion a year on wasted uh, money that through the misuse of alcohol, either through accidents or through health care. And when you think of people sitting in hospital trolleys who could be given the resources and the time that has been wasted by people in accident and emergency, that this is something that I suppose all of us in our heart know needs to be addressed. So Temperance Sunday gives us an opportunity to address that. In fact, if nobody did anything more than just clock on to the Alcohol Action Ireland website, it's full of researched information. They are an interest-free group and they don't have the vested interest of anybody. Temperance Sunday this year falls uh, just three days before Ash Wednesday. So it's an ideal kickstart into the whole notion that we as Christians have for the season of Lent, where we are asked to pray the word of God. We're asked to uh, put it into practice through either acts of self-sacrifice or self-denial, they call it fasting, and then put the fruits of our fasting or self-denial to the service of the most vulnerable, which they call almsgiving. So prayer, fasting and almsgiving are the cornerstone of the season of Lent. And if we were to take the, the word of God and say, uh, we are given this gift, let's see how can I live that during this season of Lent and the sacrifices I make and the financial savings I make, let me put them to a good cause so that rather than uh, wasting the resources of the world, we save some and we put them to good use. And the Old Testament was full of that, that the producers were not allowed to, or were asked not to second pick their crops, not to second pick any crop, but to leave what was on the apple tree or what was on the olive tree or what was in the grain in the, gr in the field, to leave it for the widows, the orphans, and the homeless or strays of the day. Well, Father Matthew was, they often hear them say, come at the hour, come at the man. And Ireland was in a bad state after the famine and people were down in their spirits. And like many cultures, took excessively to alcohol. He saw the terrible damage it was doing, making a bad situation worse. And so he encouraged people to uh, be moderate and reassess the way they look at drink. I remember being with Trokra in the Kibera slums in Nairobi and appalling conditions everywhere. And the only truck that was going down the road was what looked to me like an old petrol tank. But when I looked at it, it was distributing alcohol. It was a sign that people often take refuge in drink at a time of crisis. And um, I can imagine a lot of Irish people been tempted to do that at this time. Jesus. 
Well, this is something that I have uh, often spoken about and got a lot of stick about. But I, th I believe that advertising of any form of alcohol should be phased out. But there are so many vested interest groups who will not want that. And the very medium that we're using uh, will not want that either because the revenue from alcohol advertising is so huge. Um, and all sorts of reasons will be given that say that uh, not doing it as advertising doesn't affect consumption. The reality is it does, and that has been shown. The reality is that it affects particularly young people who are so impressionable. And when they are presented with fullness of health and life, and you'll be alive inside if you take a particular product, when the reality is if you take alcohol too young, it will eat up your brain cells, it will uh, mar and, and damage your emotional reaction, and in many ways, instead of making you alive inside, it killing what's best in you. It goes to a parish and says, if you believe that there's a drug or alcohol problem in your area and you would like to address it, we'd help you to address it in whatever small way. It may simply be just putting up a notice in the parish saying this, this is where services are available or help or just give the statutory and voluntary uh, bodies that are available to assist people and just give their contact details. That's one level. Uh, some parishes say, well, we have two or three people who have energy to do something about this and they'd like to give more than information. So they say, well, OK, we're going to heighten awareness and they may visit schools or they may visit sports clubs um, and just, again, give the kind of information that is not scaremongering, but just factual and well-researched. Or they might go to the third level, say, um, everybody needs a buzz in life and we don't want to have people addicted to chemical buzzes but we must provide them with an alternative and all the sporting organizations they give a natural sporting buzz every week every day and the, the volunteers that are attached to them that's why um, our greatest allied are sporting organizations because they give real alternatives some parishes have now started youth caps but it can be anything, be it organising hill walking, canoeing. We're blessed in Ireland with probably the, the best landscape and moderate uh, climate that in all weathers you can engage yourself outdoors. We have a natural gift for drama and we're artists uh, in so many different ways that art gives young people a great buzz. The first time any young child steps up on the stage they never look back on the confidence it gives them. So I would love to see provision of more natural buzz, uh, adrenaline rushes for children and young adults and all people rather than just chemically produced ones.